Hi, Misha here. I'm going to have one more British jet for you. Actually, one I did not think I would get. As I mentioned in my other British jet videos, one I didn't have was the Gloucester Javelin. Well, I did finally pick one up, and it's actually one I had uh, hell, held off on getting because I was not sure of the brand. And this is from Aviation 72, which essentially is the old Witty Wings tooling and factory. And the reason I'm not really crazy about the old Witty stuff is most all of it I've ever come across has landing gear in the down position. And I know it's not necessarily rational, but that really bothers me. I really like my planes with the landing gear up. In fact, this is why I don't have some of their other jets like the Seahawk or the uh, Sea Vixen. As far as I know, they have landing gear down. It just, just really bugs me. Can't help it. But I really wanted a Javelin, so I took a chance. And much to my delight, when this came in, it has optional up-down landing gear. It also has an optional closed or open sliding canopy, which other witty and aviations don't all have. And it has removable ordnance under the wings. And just generally speaking, it has that nice kind of corgi style of matte paint. And it's all, it's very metal. Some of the undercarriage, like the fuel tanks here, are plastic. But the wing, and uh, quite surprisingly, the full T-tail, are all die cast. And, which is pretty neat. A lot of times your tails on these planes are partially plastic. And it comes with a decent metal stand, kind of your typical witty JC Wings looking stand. Not my favorite, but not bad either. One benefit to this stand is it doesn't require holes in the bottom of your plane. So I was pleasantly surprised. And this really kind of completes my RAF collection of uh, jet fighters. The Javelin was the last Gloucester to go into production. And its history dates back to 1947 when the Air Ministry first put out a proposal, a requirement for a new high-performance jet, essentially to replace the Gloucester Meteor and to some extent the de Havilland Vampire. They needed a jet that would be an all-weather, so a nighttime fighter, also capable of getting up to at least 40,000 feet, being able to get up to about 600 miles per hour at least. And just, generally speaking, be modern. Well, in 49, two companies were selected, Gloucester and de Havilland, to manufacture four prototypes. And really the first attempt that Gloucester came up with was basically just a meteor with a two-seat cockpit. The second seat was required for operating the radar. Back then that was standard for night fighters. They pretty much all were multi-crew birds but then of course they would advance quite a ways over time and in 1951 the first prototype was ready and it flew late that year late November of 51 by 53 there was a second prototype with an updated wing design it flew a couple of times successfully but then it crashed the summer of that year killing the pilot but Nevertheless, can, more prototypes, more revisions continued, and by the summer of 54, the first production plane was turned off the assembly lines. 
the, uh, the British government having issued a contract a bit over a year before that. So with more revisions and changes, these finally went into RAF service in February of 1956. And they started to quickly replace meteors in service. And by 1959, all meteor squadrons had switched over to the Javelin. So what do we come up with? Well, in pretty much every way this exceeded the original specification for 1947. It is about 60 feet, uh, 60, uh, 56 feet long and some change. Has a very large delta wing, which is about 52 feet. Has this very unique T-tail. So we're seeing on this wing, this was actually the largest wing surface of any Western military aircraft of the time. <laughs> it was capable of getting up to about Mach 0 0.9 to 0 0.92, so it was still subsonic, but it was getting on that threshold, transonic, about 700 miles per hour. It could get up there pretty high up to nearly 53,000 feet. They used a few different radars, but from the beginning it was designed to use radar. Initially it was fitted with 30 millimeter cannon, but soon air-to-air -air missiles were issued on it. It could hold up to four missiles or in the case of this one, two tanks and two missiles for extended range. It was considered an easy plane to fly. Unfortunately, its protracted development period and some early accidents and things meant that, honestly, it was in service for a very brief period of time. Throughout the 1960s, these would be stationed overseas in places like Malaysia and Hong Kong, elsewhere in the British Empire, but they never saw active combat. They never actually dogfought. They were basically just used as patrols and deterrents and so on and so forth, combat air patrols. These would serve alongside the Hawker Hunter, but already by the 60s, they were being replaced by the much more advanced English Electric Lightning, which was in service by 1959, and by the early 60s was becoming a very capable aircraft in its own right, and it was able to go Mach 2. Like I said, this could at best do about Mach 0.9. So the Electric, about the only area that the... Um, Javelin, Javelin, there we go, Jaffa cookies, cookies. <laughs> the Javelin was better than the early electrics in, was that it had better range and endurance. But later variant, variants like the F6 of the Lightning kind of corrected that issue. So as an end result, the last Javelins were pulled out of active RAS service by April of 1968. And at that point, around 425 production and six or seven prototypes have been made. So numbers range from about 434 to 436 made in total. So not an insignificant number really, but, you know, it was such a blip in the radar. I mean, it was in service for just over a decade. The differences, you know, we have, this is a FAW-4, although it has some upgrades to the FAW-9. The differences mostly in the variants were just to do with the radar, also the ordnance loadout. Later versions would have reheat, hydraulic tail. Uh, one interesting thing that this version actually introduced, if you look on the wings, you'll see that these have a vortex generator on each wing. Kind of an interesting and neat feature. 
but generally this changed quite, it had a lot of minor changes, actually to the point it was driving the people at the Gloucester factory nuts trying to keep up with them, but in the grand scheme, there weren't that many. There was also a dedicated trainer version, which of course was two-seat as well. So yeah, I just kind of wanted this because it fit in well with my Corgi British planes. I'm kind of surprised that Corgi never has done a uh, 172 scale diecast Javelin, but uh, they haven't. The reason I held off buying these, if I, when I first saw this on the um, Flying Mule website, they said that the landing gear were fixed in the down position. As I said, I know it shouldn't, but that really bugs me, so I held off getting one. Yeah, one night last week I just gave up. Thought I really want a javelin. Some people have told me that some of the Aviation 72 had retractable gear. I took a chance, got it in, and like I said, I was extremely happy I did. That said, just know that other Aviation 72s may have fixed landing gear and kind of more of the gloss type paint, so you know, and they, a lot of them have the fixed canopy. Some of them don't even have much internal detail. What I say this is, is nicely made. Really, no, because it does have a little more visible seam lines than a Corgi or a Hobby Master. But it is also cheaper. It does come with a very nice metal stand. And again, it is predominantly very heavy die cast metal. So, would I recommend this one? Yes. I may try a few more Aviation 72s. I just need to verify which ones do have the retractable landing gear, which I harp on about. Hmm. Alrighty, folks. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention, but this is a two-engine design. I figured you saw it, but yeah. It's a cool looking plane. Just that big delta wing. It is cool. See the canopy opens. Alrighty guys. Appreciate you tuning in. If you could like, share, and subscribe. This is Misha. I'll catch you very soon next time.